Hi, I'm Oblissi. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, I appreciate a like, comment, sub, and little bell notification. Thanks so much, enjoy. Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a guide on how to get shiny Pokemon from raids without any hacking at all or any use of custom firmware. A lot of people have been using this website or friends with custom firmwares or something to find their raid seed and stuff like that. This method, all you need is your own switch and a computer and you can find your raid seed without any custom firmware. So the first thing you're going to need is a raid finder, uh, an excellent tool by Admiral Fish. You're also going to need Raid IV Validator, or you can go to a website that I'll link in the description. But the website is in Japanese, however Google Translate works pretty well. You're also going to need uh, Zoroshiro Inverse uh, dot jar. Um, now to get Zoroshiro Inverse running, you're going to um, a shift right click and then... Uh, oh, whoops, is it control right click? Shift right click and then open command window here and uh, it, whatever folder that Zoroshiro Inverse is in, and then to open it in command prompt, you're going to need uh, to type java minus jar space slash Zoroshiro Inverse dot jar, and then the jar will run. Okay, so um, the way this works is basically you're going to be catching four different raid Pokemon uh, and it's going to help you find your raid seed. Now, this only works if the first Pokemon has um, three perfect IVs, and there's no chance of having a uh, of having a random thirty-one IV. So, what I mean by that is, you need a Pokemon that has three guaranteed IVs from the raid, but it can't like randomly have a fourth IV. Sometimes. A Pokemon's only guaranteed two or three perfect IVs, but you'll end up with a five IV just from luck, right? Uh, you can't have a situation like that. So as you can see here, what Zoroshiro uh, Inverse Jar is asking is it says, uh, this program only supports the case that Pokemon has no 31 IV in chance and enter the precise IVs of the first raid Pokemon. So what it's going to ask is that you advance not it says first raid pokemon but it's actually not what it wants you to do right it wants you to take the fourth raid pokemon so most of you know how the date advanced method works so i'm going to cut to a clip of that now oh and actually before i do so this program and a lot of other places talk about star counts relating to ivs this is not true so a lot of places will be like there's a lot of different misinformation about this but basically here's the nice part raid finder has all of the correct information on every single Pokemon. So I was doing Den 49, I think, a uh, normal beam for Den 49. And as you can see, um, it'll just show all Pokemon that are available for this Den. So you can just look through the Den to see which Pokemon are guaranteed which number of IVs, right? So. I can't use Grimmsnarl, Rapidash, Alcremie, Gardevoir, or Clefable, but I could use Morgrem um, because it's got thirty, it's got three thirty-one IVs. So I'm going to use Morgrem, and that's the nice thing about Raid Finder is you can just click whatever den you end up using and then search for the Pokemon that you need that's going to have three perfect IVs. So I'm going to end up aiming for a Morgrem, and Morgrem can be three or four stars because um, all I need is it to have uh, uh, three perfect IVs. Okay, so once you know uh, which Pokemon you're aiming for, what you're going to do is do the typical invite others method and then advance the date once. So as you can see, this Clefable is my first frame. I'll advance again. I have an Alcremie with five stars as my second frame. I'll advance again. And I'll have uh, a different Pokemon on my third frame. And what you want is the fourth frame, because the fourth frame is with the IVs and the shininess is locked and stuff like that, but the Pokemon isn't. So you can get it to be different star raid amounts, uh, is what I'm saying. So when we go here, we'll see which uh, which type of raid we got. So this is my fourth frame, and I've got a five star Clefable. So this is no good because we need a Pokemon. Uh, in my case, I'm going to need a Morgrim, but we need a Pokemon that only has 331 IVs guaranteed. This is uh, what we're looking for. So we're just going to have to do these three advances again. And once we do these three advances again, then we're going to uh, hopefully find a Morgrim in my case. And it can be three or four stars. And for those of you who've never done the advancement here before, it's basically clicking on a raid den, 
clicking invite others and then going into the system settings while invite others is searching for other people going to the date and time and just increasing the day by one and hitting okay and then backing out of the menu and doing it again i think most people are familiar with that at this point but and there are faster ways to advance the date but for our purposes we don't need to go fast all we need to do is just get to frame four easily and uh, since we're going to be closing the game it's not really very viable to use other faster methods like the versus uh, method so um, again as you can see my first three pokemon are always the same it's the clefable then it's the alcremi then it's the rapidash but then when i get to my fourth pokemon it's going to switch uh, and in my case it's going to be a three star morgan which is awesome so um, at this point i'm going to just battle and capture the raid and you're not going to save and you need to make sure that autosave is turned off uh, this is because if autosave is turned on, it'll automatically save after you capture the raid, and you do not want that to happen, okay? So I'm just going to fast forward through me catching the raid and stuff like that. All right, so once the raid is captured, what you're gonna wanna do is check out its stats, its natures, and all that stuff, and you wanna get it to level 100, and you wanna calc its IVs exactly. Uh, and if you've never calc a Pokemon's IVs before, all it means is just, uh, you don't have to get it to level 100, there are other ways to calc the IVs if you know how to do that better, but the simplest way is just to get the Pokemon to level 100 and type all of its IVs into a stat calculator. Right now, the only two stat calculators are either in Raid Finder itself or on Serapy. Um, uh, for new Pokemon and for old Pokemon, uh, you can still use Raid Finder if you want, or you can use a Pokemon calculator like Metal Kid IV Calc. Uh, but at this point, all you need to do is calculate its stats. All right, so once your Pokemon is captured and leveled to 100, you're going to want to write down all of its characteristics in a note sheet uh, somewhere. So write down the star count, uh, the IV count, um, the ability that you've gotten, uh, if it can, if it can, only if it can have more than one ability. Uh, and ignore hidden ability. So if you get the hidden ability, ignore it. And if you can have more than one ability, um, uh, then you write down which ability you got. And then write down the gender if the gender can change. So we're going to type Morgren. And you can go to whatever stack calc you choose. Um, put in the nature, put in the level, and type is away your stats. All right, and then calculate individual values. Okay, so we have our exact individual values right here. So now what we do at this point is go over to the raid IV validator and type in the stats you get. All right, if it says IVs are valid, um, it'll tell you which IVs you expect from a four uh, perfect uh, IV Pokemon. So it'll expect these four IVs to be perfect and then these two to not be perfect. Um, and if it's not valid, what you're going to have to do is um, permanently do that frame advancement like I did. So as you noticed, I went to frame four. I caught the Morgrim and the Morgrim uh, said it was good. So I don't save. I So I'm going to reset the game. And now we're going to look for a Pokemon that's got four guaranteed IVs. If your IVs were not valid, right, um, then what you would do is you would reset the game again, advance to the Morgrim. Uh, you didn't even have to advance to the Morgrim, actually. All you have to do is advance one frame forward, so do the date trick once, just one day forward, and then save, and then reset and now check your fourth frame again and you just keep doing that over and over and over again until you see if you have a pokemon that this program here says is valid and once you get a pokemon that is valid you're good to go uh, heads up this is a very low rate this is probably 15 percent of the time i think is how often it's going to be valid so it's going to take a while but don't worry about it all right so at this point i'm going to be looking for the same frame as the morgan so remember 
I did the date advancement three times to get to frame four. Now what I'm looking for is a Pokemon that has four guaranteed IVs. Uh, and again, we can look in Raid Finder for us to tell. Uh, so again, I'm going to go into my Den in Raid Finder, right? And I can see that um, Clefable, Gardevoir, Alcremie, Rapidash, Grimmsnarl all have four guaranteed IVs. So as long as I get any of those Pokemon, even if it's a Clefable with um, a three-star raid, as long as the Clefable would have four perfect IVs, I would be good. So that's all I want here, right? So I'm doing the same amount of advancements here, going forward, going, changing the date, blah, blah, blah. Doing the usual advancement shtick uh, until I get to uh, my, my fourth frame. And unfortunately, this whole process, this whole setup, this is the whole section I would consider the setup. It takes quite a while. But once you get a Pokemon that's got valid IVs from Raid Validator, you are going to eventually find your seed, albeit it could take a while. So as you can see, immediately I get a four-star Alcremie. So at this point, all I got to do is catch the Alcremie. And I'm going to cut, I'm just going to do like a fast forward through me catching that as well. All right, once your Pokemon is at level 100 and you've caught it and all that, you're gonna just do the same thing and stat calc it again. And make sure you write down all of its attributes. All right, we're back at the stat calculator for Alcremie. Now for this Pokemon here, you actually don't need to write down the um, all of its attributes and abilities and stuff like that. None of those actually matter. Um, they only matter for, this po uh, for the first Pokemon and then the next two Pokemon you're gonna go for. Um, the star count, it, you should write down, but it's not the biggest deal if you uh, forget to write it down. 271, 140, 204, 226, 254, 164. And then you calculate individual values, and it's going to give you everything you want here. So make sure to write down all of these um, in a note sheet so far. So as you can see, I've taken down my Morgrim and my Alcremie's information down in a little note sheet. So now what we need to do is we need to um, we need to find the Pokemon on frame uh, on frame five, which is the frame after the one we just went for. Now this Pokemon could technically be any one, like any amount of star count, any amount of guaranteed IVs. But I do think it's best to just get the lowest guaranteed IVs you possibly can. So in my specific case, I ended up aiming for a Curlia, which is three stars and only two guaranteed perfect IVs. All right, so as the game opens up, we're just going to be doing exactly what we did before. Um, and I'm going to have this actually a little bit sped up. So we're just going to be advancing frames uh, in order to get to the um, fifth frame. So uh, if you remember last time, the Morgrim and the Alcremi were both caught on frame four. Um, we're going to be aiming for frame 5, which is a Curlia. Um, you don't have to aim for the lowest possible amount of perfect IVs, but I do think it's more helpful and it will speed the process up, so I would personally aim for it, although if you're impatient, uh, you can do that. So as you can see, I got a Curlia here, and uh, I'm just going to catch it and calc its IVs like I did with the other Pokemon.
All right, so again, we're going to be just stat calcing the new Pokemon that we got. <clears throat> so just type in all of its stats. Again, make sure you're writing down all of its abilities and attributes and gender. So Curly's gender can change. Um, Morgrim's could not, but since Curly's can, make sure you write down the gender of the Curly that you had. And calculate individual values. So we got all these. Make sure we write all of these down. Uh, in our little document so hold on so again make sure uh, oh. so again I've got all of my information written down here about the Pokemon um, and as you can see actually I've written down ability uh, 0 or ability 1 the way you can tell this right if I go to if I go to Curlia on Cerebi Ability zero is going to be this the first ability they list and ability one is going to be the second ability they list You can also find this in raid finder um, uh, Oh no, it actually doesn't matter in raid finder because it switches around yet But it'll work on Cerebi like that. It's usually just uh, the lower ability and again if it can only have one ability um, Then uh, you just don't take the single ability uh, into account Okay, so suffice it to say, at this point, there are plenty of redundancies. And um, I'm going to be catching one more final Pokemon that's going to be on the frame after the one that Curlia was on. So if my, your first unlocked frame is frame 4, then your next unlocked frame is frame 5, and the frame after that is frame 6, you're going to be catching a Pokemon on frame 6. So I found another Morgrim. Again, three perfect IVs is totally fine. Um, and I'm not going to show the whole process of catching it. I don't want to cause tedium here So we're just going to quickly get it and we're going to dip and you're going to have to calc its IVs perfectly And then I'm going to show you exactly how the program works Okay, so um, Once you've got all of your Pokemon so frame 4 is your first two Pokemon are both on frame 4 um, and frame 5 is your next Pokemon, and then frame 6 is the frame after that. Once you've got all of these Pokemon, uh, your first frame, so frame 4, should be a Pokemon with only 3 guaranteed IVs. Then your next one should be a Pokemon with 4 guaranteed IVs. The two after that can either have 3 or 2 guaranteed IVs. Um, you don't have to be very picky about it, um, but I think the lower amount of perfect IVs you go, the easier it's going to be for this program to find your seed. So... Then, it, this program here, Zoroshiro Inverse.jar, is going to ask you to enter the precise IVs of the first Pokemon. So, good one. Good one. Six, seven, twenty-nine. Now, it says, suppose the rest, suppose the number of insured IVs for the first Pokemon is three. Again, we knew that was true. Enter the rest of the consecutive IVs. So what it means by consecutive IVs is if you remember from Raid Validator here, it says X and X would be um, the non-perfect ones. That's what we're looking for. So if you remember, I found an Alcremi uh, on frame four that had four guaranteed IVs. If you can see these IVs, they kind of changed a little bit, right? So the consecutive IVs are basically the two non-perfect IVs of your four star or your four star or your five star your four guaranteed IV Pokemon on frame four So I'm going to type one and then seven Enter. Then it says enter the number of stars on the uh, second raid Pokemon now again The wording is a bit confusing here, but second Pokemon is not the Alcremie that I got right It's the Curlia for all intents and purposes the Alcremie and the Morgrim are the same Pokemon This Curlia here is the actual second Pokemon so I got a three star, enter the lower bounds. So it's gonna ask for the lower and the upper bounds. You calc them exactly, so you're gonna enter the same thing twice, basically, so it's gonna say. So just enter your exact IVs for the first time. And then it's gonna ask for the upper. Since we calc the IVs exact, you just type literally the same exact thing. In. Then it's gonna say, suppose the number of uh, stars insured for three IVs is two, which is correct, we only have two perfect ones. Uh, enter the number of stars for the third raid Pokemon. That's going to be our second Morgrim, so it was four. Enter the lower bounds again. We calc them exactly. Again, just type them exactly. Suppose the number of insured uh, IVs for the third Pokemon is three. 
enter the index of ability for the first raid Pokemon. So ability one, and remember you can find that on uh, Cerebi. Now again, if your Pokemon has no, uh, if only has one ability, type ignore. And if you got the hidden ability, also type ignore. But for my case, I'm typing one. Uh, does the first raid Pokemon require gender evaluation? It is a Morgrim. Morgrim is always male, so hit N and hit enter. Enter the nature of the first Pokemon in English or Japanese. So mine is relaxed. Uh, enter the index of ability of the second raid Pokemon. Type ignore. So index of ability again. The second raid Pokemon is the Curlia, not the Alcremie. Again, Alcremie and Morgrim are the same Pokemon. So I got ability zero. The second raid Pokemon require gender evaluation. Yes, my Curlia can be either male or female. It doesn't matter what the gender ratio is. If it can be both genders, it requires gender evaluation. If it cannot be both genders, or if it's if it's locked to one gender, or it can't be a gender, hit no. But mine, it does. Enter the nature, uh, bashful. Um, enter the index of the ability of the third raid Pokemon. Ability one again. Third Pokemon require gender evaluation. Nope. Enter the nature. It's calm. Uh, and now it's going to do a calculation. This calculation can take a while. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to show you what it does when it gets a seed. Okay, so once it spits out a seed, you're going to just want to type that seed into Raid Finder. It's really long, and you also don't actually need to type the 0x portion of it uh, into Raid Finder either. Uh, I couldn't copy from command prompt for some reason but normally you actually should be able to just fine um, so once you've got your raid seed all, all typed in you're just going to hit generate to make sure that everything lines up there's also a chance it actually outputs more than one different raid seed um, and if it hopefully it only outputs a few if it's not only outputting one and if it outputs more than one uh, what you want to do is just copy both of them down and write them in a notepad somewhere and check both of them I happen to know I only got one but the way you check it is what I'm going to be showing you now. Um, so, uh, as I hit generate here, it's going to show all of these spreads for the potential Pokemon in the den. Uh, I'm going to use Morgren as an example here. So I hit generate, and as you can see, it lines up with my first Morgram and my third Morgram. The middle frame doesn't line up with the Curlia, but that's because Curlia has less guaranteed IVs than Morgram. Um, that's just how that works. Um, and since everything uh, lines up just fine, uh, what we're going to want to do is, uh, and take a look here, it considers frame one my, what our, what our frame four was previously. So that frame, frame four, is essentially considered frame one. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is try and make sure that you can line it up with everything. So I switch it to the Curlia, the Curlia lines up, the two Morgrims lined up, very cool. Um, and what we want to make sure is the frame 4, which the program didn't have any information on, lines up with the Raid Finder. And once you do that successfully, once all of these IVs and the nature and the gender and everything lines up with this frame, that means um, you're good and you're on the right track. And now we can be actually begin searching for our shiny frame. Finally, after all of this prep work and this tedium and all of this, we can begin working for our shiny frame. Uh, so what you want to do is just increase the number of frames to probably like 5,000. You could increase it higher if you're willing to do more advancements. Advancements can take a while, but you know. So I switch it to star or square shiny because I don't care which type of shiny I get. And I have a shiny frame on 3131. Now we don't want to just advance to frame 3131. We want to advance to frame uh, a little bit before 3131. Because if you remember, like when we were doing this for this uh, here itself, we turned a Morgrim into an Alcremi to figure out the difference between the locked IVs, right? Um, and so we're going to want to do the same thing where we're four frames earlier so we can find the specific Pokemon that we wanted, right? Um, so we're going to subtract three frame from 3131. Uh, so 3128 would be the frame we're actually going to be aiming for so that we can reset to find multiple different ones. Uh, to find multiple different like uh, uh, shinies. Now on top of this, we could also uh, look for IVs if we don't care about shininess. It's going to be very hard to find shininess and IVs on the same uh, thing, but we can look for just IVs if we feel like it. And uh, now at this point, um, we're going to move on to the uh, advancement stage. And here I'm just showing a bunch of perfect IV Rapidash that I could have gotten if I chose. 
Okay, I know what you're thinking. Blissy. Why the hell are you recording your Switch with the webcam? Well, first of all, it's in handheld mode. That's important. Um, and second of all, because this is like the legit way to advance frames, okay? It's going to be in handheld mode. So first of all, you need to be in the Wedgehurst Pokemon Center. I think this is the best Pokemon Center. Uh, for this, because it doesn't crash. So, you're going to save. Um, you're going to save here, and you're going to go into versus mode, and you're going to do the versus trick. Now, not a lot of people know about this super fast way of advancing. Um, I know a lot of people know about how the versus mode thing works, kind of. Um, but basically what you do is you go online, you go into ranked battles. Uh, and you go and you just kind of loot. I'm not going to do the Master Ball tier because I don't want to lose my ranking. I actually care about it. Care enough to get to Master Ball tier anyway. But for the singles battle, I'm just going to go and I'm going to lose a match instantly. You don't have to lose if you care about both ranks. You actually just do not have to lose. Uh, you do not have to lose at all. You could totally try and win the battle just fine. It's just faster to lose, especially if you don't care about it. And unfortunately, it also does have to be ranked battles. Again, forgive the horrible looking video, but that's just how it be. That's just how it be sometimes. And uh, sometimes finding another trainer can take a while, but that's not a big deal. Uh, once we get a battle, uh, we will just immediately run. And I suggest you do the same for that kind of thing. Um, it's pretty tedious to do anything other than run. Um, and luckily, it doesn't take too long for everything to work. All right, we got the trainer. So we just have to pick a team as fast as possible. I thought that more Pekka was uh, Pichu. I wonder how many people enjoy the free win or how many people are disappointed by it. So I'm just going to quit now. Again, you could play this battle out if you felt like it. I do not. And again, I do have a capture card, but I'm just trying to show you the actual fastest way for this to work. So don't care about all this. Just back out of this menu here. All right, now, the way you can verify it's working is, and so my Lodo ID is surely going to work. It's fine. So this is normally a once a day activity you can do, is the Lotto ID. Alright, so now you can go into this menu. You can do date and settings, date and time, and you can literally just hit up and OK. So, right, if you're watching what I'm doing, I'm messing it up a little bit, but you get the gist. This is by far the fat, and you can really, you can really get into a rhythm if you're really going. This is by far the fastest way to advance the date. Again, you don't even have to go um, in. You can, you don't even have to go into the game um, to uh, for that to work. But I promise it'll work, and you can just verify it works by talking to the Lotto ID guy. But I promise you that advances multiple frames, and you just have to do that. So once you've done all the advancements and you've gotten to your thousands frames, and thousands of frames like done, until you're, um, I'm just going to show the up frame on my stream here. Of shiny frame. Uh, doing this, or but it's three before cool. rather. Um, so you're just going to do the three advances, and so keep in mind that frame one is the frame you're on. So this first five star Clefable here is my frame one. My frame two, I believe, is a second five star Clefable. And my frame three is, I want to say, a four-star Gardevoir. 
and uh, so your frame four again if you if you've done it like I've done it um, your frame four is going to be a Pokemon that is shiny and you'll know its nature and you'll know its IVs but the Pokemon can change now that's the coolest part is if you have a friend or if you have two switches you can farm every single potential shiny from this den that's my favorite part right and um, once you farm every single one of them, you can then eventually just lock it in and share the raid with everybody. So as you can see, I'm going to do my final advance here. And we're going to be getting a shiny four-star Clefable. Uh, it's just very cool. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, my stream here, sharing it with pretty much anyone I feel like. Um, the raid fills up instantly because everyone knows they're getting a cool shiny. Um, and now you've gotten shiny and you've used no custom firmware, you used no hacks, you didn't use a website. Um, for example, that seed finding website I consider like basically cheating because it's using data viewing to find it. Um, you're not using a friend with custom firmware, it's totally independent. And even if you can't share the raid with anyone, you don't have Nintendo Wi-Fi, uh, even if you can't catch multiple of the den, um, you can still use this to pick out a specific Pokemon that you want. Uh, let's say you could only get one red Pokemon and you wanted a shiny Clefable. Well, there's your dream come true, baby. A shiny freaking Clefable. Um, I hope this guide was helpful. Please, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Join my Discord. Watch my streams uh, to see if I can help you out in any way. Um, and uh, all the links to everything is down below. Uh, please um, enjoy and good luck uh, searching.